Perhaps the single biggest achievement of Dominica's citizenship by investment programme has been the financing of public housing and infrastructure to mitigate the effects of Hurricane Maria in 2017. The follow-up has been the injection of funds into tourism facilities to create construction and hospitality jobs for many young people affected by the natural disaster. We speak to His Excellency Emmanuel Nanthan, coordinator of the Citizenship by Investment Unit, to discuss the allocation of funds and the competition for applicants between rival centres. So in 2014, I think you reshaped your programme slightly to include a broader range of investment options. Has this increased the diversity of choice which can benefit the economy? Most definitely. In 2014, we allowed people to invest uh, in a program through the real estate arm. Um, we are now building uh, six five-star hotels uh, in Dominica. Each developer has a product to go out and sell to market. They're looking for the niche market in different areas where uh, investors are available. And because they're doing that, we have more and more of the Dominica program uh, being explained all around the world. And there are a number of Caribbean jurisdictions now competing for the same pool of applicants for citizenship. How do you feel Dominica stands out amongst these rivals? We do not accept applications directly from, from an investor. The agents are the ones who interact with the investor. So we listen to them. We listen to the concerns of the agents. And we try to uh, fashion our program to ensure that we meet the need of the market without compromising our product. The people who invest are high net worth people. The people who have built their lives, their reputations uh, of, because of hard work and they, they are respected or where they operate at their homes, in their offices, in their communities. So they are VIP. So we assign staff to every applicant so that every investor can be treated as a VIP. When we take that approach, we are able to provide uh, good service to our investors and that is satisfied with anything that keeps us ahead and above, ahead and shoulders above the others. And which are now the key regional hubs where you market your services and where many of the applications are being sourced from? The Middle East area out of Dubai where you, uh, that serves as a melting pot really uh, has been very key for us and we're continuing to service those markets but we try to expand the product uh, in every way. The typical investor is the one who is investing to get uh, a passport to facilitate the movement for business and for work opportunities. There are other group of people who themselves are involved, who, who uh, apply, and basically it's because of where they are. There are people who were born in a particular country, they grew up, spent all their lives earning their income and earning a, a good uh, salary or where they are, but they have no passports. They are not allowed citizenship. And those people, they need uh, citizenship and they need to move and they apply for a program. When we deal with people like that, it makes us uh, feel proud because really and truly, these people, they feel a sense of gratitude for Dominica and, uh, and we feel a sense of respect for being able to assist them and facilitate them. And uh, there is a mutual relationship and understanding. I've come to see Daryl Teet, who is head of Dominica's Government Information Service to discuss some of the major construction projects which have transformed the nation. We can begin with the Westbridge project. That was an $18 million project that I think started Dominica's quest towards being the first climate resilient country in the world. It was built before Maria, but it withstood Maria, not even the paint on the bridge was affected uh, by the storm, which damaged three other bridges along the same river. This was the first phase, the start, towards creating a new city of Roseau. In the sense, not building a new Roseau, but redoing Roseau uh, in, in a new way. 
Um, Roseau is a very old city, and uh, the prime minister decided that we have to modernize the city. Uh, the bridge was the first part of that. Along with the bridge came the building of river walls, which um, is important because during hurricanes, the river is what locals say comes down. It flows very high and causes a lot of havoc. So government has spent quite a bit of money and that has been made possible through the CBI without having to go to take loans. It has um, brought quite a bit of employment to the, the local people and it has um, began, began to change the, the, the face of the city to make it a more modern roseau and a more modern, modern country. CBI has kept many people alive in Dominica. Why? Because government has been able to step in in terms of people suffering from serious health crisis, be able to flow, um, fly them overseas for medical treatment. People who have accidents, they were able to be flown overseas for medical treatment. That has been made possible through the CBI. The CBI has resulted in quite a bit of Dominicans going overseas to study at universities. They never thought they would be able to because government has a policy of one university graduate in every household in Dominica. I think that has far been surpassed because uh, I think it's now to the level of two university graduates in every household. CBI has made it possible that, look, you announce a project and within a year you see actual construction work being done. Not any other Caribbean country can say that at this time.